Hello, it's me again, Carly, brand ambassador for Inzoni. And today we're gonna to be talking about a couple little things that don't seem like they have to do with each other, but they do. I promise they do. Stick with me. We're gonna come full circle at some point. We're gonna talk about things you should have booked before you start shopping for your wedding dress. And on top of that, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to figure out what your wedding style is for your dress, not your whole wedding. I'm not that good. I just know about dresses. Okay, let's talk. Okay, so you did the first really hard thing. You found the fiance, <laughs> right? That's like the hardest part. So you did that. Kudos, cheers. We're so happy for you. Congratulations on your engagement. So the two big things that you're gonna wanna have figured out before you make your first appointment are where and when. And I promise you, there is a reason for that. So let's talk about a couple of those reasons. Where, venue, where are you gonna do it? Backyard, beach snowy mountaintop, Alcatraz. I don't know, there's a lot of options. There's a lot of venues. Um, obviously, I always tell people that your dress is not a costume, so you're not trying to pick an outfit that will fit your venue necessarily, but there's gonna be a reason why you pick the venue that you pick, right? You fall in love with it, you love the look of it. So before you go wedding dress shopping and commit to a dress that you love, which you should do, you do wanna have a visual of where the wedding is gonna be just in case you end up falling in love with a venue that's a little bit different than you know the dress that you've picked out. If you feel like they don't match, then you're gonna be really bummed out that you feel like your dress and your venue don't match. Does that make sense? That would be a bummer. So say for example, you, know, you think you're gonna do a spring wedding outdoors and so you find a dress that you love that's really light and sheathy and strapless and then for whatever reason, you end up finding a venue and it's only available in December and it's gonna be snowing and you're gonna take amazing pictures outside. You're gonna be really, really bummed out if you feel like the look of your dress is not gonna fit with the aesthetic of where your pictures are gonna be taken. So that's a big thing to take into account and consider. And with that comes your date. What, when is it gonna be? What time of year is it gonna be? So again, before you commit to a dress that might be better suited for outdoor pictures in the spring or the summer months, if you ended up going for something in the winter unexpectedly, you do wanna make sure that your dress kind of reflects that aesthetic and that vibe and feeling. So dress is gonna be picked after you have your date and your venue because those things all go hand in hand, my friend. Okay, you can't have one without the other. It's like love and marriage. Love and marriage. Okay, so you found the venue. You have the location, you have the date. Perfect. Let's start looking. What are you looking for? And how on earth do you narrow it down? I got some tips for that. So when I first sit down with a bride, one of the initial questions that I ask her is, can you describe your style to me? Literally, like your clothing style. Or I'll say, what are some of the stores that you shop at? Just because your dress should be a reflection of your personality, right? This is not a costume. You are not dressing up as a bride. You are dressing yourself as a bride. So you should feel like it's your style, it's your personality. So um, giving the consultant kind of some buzzwords as ways to hone in on what your individual style in is super helpful. So we have, you know, boho or clean, modern, um, preppy or classic, things like that. That's really gonna help the consultant kind of hone in onto what you're just aesthetically drawn to and kind of help figure out what dresses to pull and where to go from there. Also too though, keep in mind, once you start trying on dresses, that's gonna be the biggest thing. It's really gonna be putting them on, seeing what you're liking. You might swear up and down that you don't want this or you do want that and you end up with something completely different. That does happen, oh my word, like 99% of the time. Okay, that's kind of a high guesstimate. 89% of the time, truly. I mean, people just say they don't want this or they do want that and they end up getting the thing that they swore they hated. So be open-minded, but do you kind of have that sense of the vibe that you're going for for your wedding? Because that's just really helpful for us to kind of get that starting off point and, and in turn picking dresses as we move through the appointment after the first round of dresses. Okay, so you gave your consultant the vibe. They picked a great first round second round, you've got a couple favorites, but then you're you know, getting to the end of the appointment and you're able to narrow it down to two dresses. Two, two favorite dresses. You love both of these dresses. How are you gonna pick between the two? And sometimes to complicate matters even further, 
The dresses not only are both beautiful and you love them both equally, but they are opposite ends of the spectrum. They are completely different. One's a ball gown, one's fitted lace. How the heck are you choosing between the two? Okay, I'm gonna give you a big pro tip here. I'm telling you, this works 100% of the time, 80% of the time. Just kidding, that's a bad Ron Burgundy joke. I don't know the quote. Okay, so one thing that is so helpful You've obviously taken pictures in both dresses and to flip back and forth between the two pictures, that's great. You know, you can sort of kind of get a vibe of what you like more, but one really, really, really awesome thing to do is stand on your podium or your stage or wherever you're at, face your people that are with you and have somebody take a photo of you from the neck down. I always have the bride put her arms behind her back like she's getting arrested. Sorry, cause I couldn't show you. So now you know what I'm talking about, just behind her back and really just get a picture of the full dress, neck down, pretty close up, fill the frame, and then put on the other dress and do the exact same thing. And then what you're gonna do is put those pictures side by side. One of those apps, you know, pick frame, pick stitch, one of them, you've got one. It is so incredibly helpful to actually see the pictures legitimately side by side. When you're flipping back and forth, you're not gonna get the same perspective as that. When you have them literally, boom, right in front of you next to each other where you can compare, almost always there is an immediate like, oh my gosh, I look 10 pounds lighter in this one or look how much thinner my waist looks or I like the detail on this one so much more or the shape of this is so much better. I'm telling you, this trick works. So make sure if you're stuck between two, somebody's got the ability to do this little magic trick for you because it's really gonna help you to, to see things from a different perspective and figure out which one you're liking more. Also, I did make the point of saying neck down a couple times and there is a reason for that. I find that when you take out facial expressions, hair, all that kind of stuff, it helps you to just look at the dress in a different way where you can step back with less judgment. We're all really hard on ourselves and so sometimes if you know, you're making a weird face in one of the pictures or your hair's looking funky in the other, that can skew and sway your opinion. So literally have it be dress only so that you can just see that full up close, beautiful, and it's gonna help you figure out which one's the one. Another really big thing to think about when you're stuck between two dresses is, um, I'll always ask brides, which one do you think is more dramatic, right? Right? Because think about it, you're only gonna do this one time. And both dresses can really feel like you and your style. But if there is one dress that's a little bit more going for it, a little bit more drama, a little bit more just wow factor, in my opinion, why wouldn't you go with that dress, right? Like this is your one chance to really go for it and go big or go home. So that's a big thing that I ask people and it's a little good food for thought, something to think about just in the sense that you get to do this once, so you definitely don't ever want to look back and say, why didn't I get, you know, the more dramatic dress? Also, when you're stuck between two dresses is something to think about is how each dress would be described, right? Each dress is going to give off its own personality. So imagine yourself walking down the aisle in both of these dresses and think about what people are going to have as their initial reaction. Is there the huge ball gown, one of your options, and you just know that when you step out from wherever you're stepping out from and people finally lay eyes on you, is there gonna be like a <gasps> moment because it's so dramatic and over the top? Is it a really romantic look? Is it a really sexy look? What is the vibe that you want to be projected from your dress? What are people gonna, how would, how would they describe it? That is another thing to think about. When you're really stuck to an interesting little thought exercise. Um, sometimes we will ask brides, okay, so you're stuck between these two dresses. Say you can't pick. So on your wedding day, there will be two boxes and each of these dresses will be in each of the boxes and you just pick one, but you don't know which one's which. If you open box A and dress A is in there, are you going to be disappointed it wasn't B? I don't know. Are you? 
So if you have taken all of that into account, you've done the pictures and you are still hopelessly stuck between a couple of styles, sometimes taking a breather is a good thing to do. Throw your clothes back on, take a seat with your guests, look at your pictures a little bit more, talk it out, get some of that feedback. Sometimes all you need is to release that pressure of you know being up on the stage, standing in the dress with everybody breathing down your neck. Is this it? Sometimes you just need to take a minute. Sometimes brides will even go leave, go get a cocktail, go grab some lunch. I know with right now, that's not necessarily an option, but if you do need to take a little bit of time to step away, that is okay. We do not want you to have buyer's remorse. Nobody wants to get that call the next day where you call and you say, I've been up all night and I cannot believe that I said yes and I'm having major doubts. We don't wanna hear that from you. We want you to be 100% when you're saying yes to the dress. So if you need to take a minute, sit back, take it all in, do that. I'd like you to meet today's video assistant. Yes, that look of horror and terror is standard. It's okay. It's all right. Full of shivers, okay. Horrified. So that's pretty much it for some advice on things to have ready to go before you start shopping and ways to kind of figure out what your wedding dress style is also how to narrow down between two different styles. I hope this helped you guys. If you have other questions, please let me know. I am happy to help. Uh, as usual, thank you so much for tuning in and please check out Inzoni's IGTV for our previous videos and we will see you next time soon. Maybe probably next week. I'll see you soon.